Father Vogel, we continue our series on St. Francis de Sales' introduction to the devout life. We have actually reached the penultimate chapter. The, we only have one more video after this to go. And in this uh, next chapter that's almost here at the end, St. Francis wants to address uh, two objections that people can bring to um, this work that he's given for assisting us on growing in holiness, following the devout life. And so the first objection that he says could come up with is that when we look at this whole book, there's just so much there. And we can ask, you know, how are we ever going to accomplish all of this? This is supposed to be for um, just a regular person, you know, who has all these other duties, you know, if you're, whether it's in marriage, your children, your, your work, all these different things you have to do. Who has time to do all these things? That if you were to try to follow all of the practices that he puts forth in this book, then there would be no time for any of those other things. So St. Francis says, well, yes, indeed, indeed, all of these things are, are good. And if that was the only thing we ever did, then we would be doing well to do them. But to help us understand is that he gives all these things not because we're supposed to do them all at once. We shouldn't try to do them all at once or like every single day. We need to do every single thing that he gives for us or use every single meditation. Let's say when we're talking about that, you know, you, you do one meditation at a time, just one, one uh, uh, at, a, at a certain day. Don't try to do them all at once. And you know, the time of meditation should be limited to you know, just that one hour of meditation. Um, and of course, when we're trying to develop that, we might have to start a little bit um, lower. And may, we might not be able to, uh, at first, have that uh, time. He gives an analogy to help us understand this. You know, he says that, you know, think of the civil laws that we have in our country. You know, there's a lot of civil laws. And we're, we have to make sure that we follow them. But they're not burdens on us day to day because the vast majority of those laws don't apply every single day. And many of those laws are written for very specific cases and when it comes up in our lives then we have to make sure that we comply with them but for the most part we really don't need to know about them um, they don't affect us on our daily basis so he says this is in the same way when it comes to the different exercises that he gives is that there's a time and place for each of them that we're not to try to do them all at once and even when we, were, when we went through the long chapter on the different virtues um, he began by saying, you know, to pick one or two of the virtues that you want to specifically try to work on. That even though he goes through all of these and he gives these examples, we're not necessarily asked by God to be working on all of them in a very deliberate manner all at once. Obviously, we would like all these virtues to grow within our lives, but for some of us, you know, we may already be living out more easily some of these virtues rather than, rather than others. And so we just choose certain ones that we want to specifically focus upon. So this first objection doesn't really apply. He says that we can, we don't have to worry about, am I going to have enough time? We can grow in holiness. Um, he says with courage, you know, step out and trust the Lord. You know, that the one who can, you know, multiply the loaves and the fishes can multiply our time that he can make fruitful our lives if we are striving to make that time for him in growing in holiness. So uh, he goes on to the second objection. Uh, a second objection, he, someone could look at it and be like, well, you know, St. Francis, you kind of assume that, that people are able and know how to engage in that kind of meditative prayer, that mental prayer um, that you that you put forth, but it's not true that there's many people who don't know how to do that, you know, and so they won't be able to follow your method if uh, if they don't know how to do that kind of meditative prayer. Well, St. Francis's response to this is, well, yes, I understand that. That is very true. There are many people who do not understand how to do mental prayer, but that's kind of the point of the whole book <laughs> is to teach you how to do these things, is to help you begin with that. He says, even though there's many people who may not know how to do it, he's like, there's going to be very, very few people, even those that are, you know, <laughs> the most or consider themselves to be 
the, you know, the most unintelligent. It doesn't require a lot of intelligence to engage in this practice of mental prayer. He says that anybody can learn it, and that's the key, is that even if you look at this and you're like, I don't know how to do it, I don't know if I'm doing it right, is that we can learn it. You know, God desires for us to uh, grow in relationship with Him. And so, you know, when it comes to this kind of interior prayer, you know, if we make ourselves available to God, you know, placing ourselves before Him and having that kind of content uh, of the meditations that we're going to use, whether it's from St. Francis, ones that he gives us, or from the scripture or life of a saint, if we begin and engage in that, you know, we have to trust that God is going to help us. I mean, Jesus wants to have a deeper relationship with us. He wants us to grow in holiness. And so he's going to help us to be able to do that. So these two objections that could be brought up that might prevent somebody from you know, embarking upon these different exercises and growing in the devout life, uh, St. Francis sees as, you know, they're not, they're not going to be a problem, um, especially if we have that trust in God uh, that He desires us to grow in this way. God bless. Mm -hmm.